I know what you're saying. He couldn't. He didn't. He would not seriously buy yet another multimeter. Well, it is, and he did. What's happening, guys? Um, I had a request, uh, I don't know, a couple months back about some clamp meters. So, being a fan of Unity, I have a couple Unity meters. I think they make some halfway decent stuff for the home hobbyist. I thought we'd grab one of these. This is the mini clamp meter, the UT210 series. I bought it off of Amazon. And uh, I think I paid $44 for it. So, let's unpack. Inside we have a nice bag. We have our leads, which are Mark Unity and Cat 3 600, no, Cat 2, Cat 4 600 volt, Cat 3 1000 volts, as long as you keep their little condoms on them. We have the meter, which is really a nice size, handheld. Alright, I'm, I'm, I'm being picky here, okay? But, I mean, that's why we're here, to see our likes and dislikes. So, right out of the box, I like that it's hand size. Let me bring the camera up a little bit more so you can see. But... You see where the uh, the clamp trigger is? Now look, if I'm going to hold it, I'm right-handed, so if I'm going to hold it like this and put this here, I'm covering everything up. If this had been flipped the other way, you know, maybe that would be a lot better. Again, being super picky here. It's got batteries in it. All right. Now, one thing to say about these meters, they are not fused, and they don't need to be fused because we are not passing any current through them. You're going to get your current readings through the camp, through the clamp, through the camp. You have to go to camp if you want current readings. You have to go to current camp. No, through the clamp, we're going to rely on um, some electrical principles to get our current readings. So, um... Let's run it through some tests. I'm sure it uses standard probes. I will be getting out my favorite Probe Master Gold Tip probes just because I want to make people write angry comments about why don't I test meters with the probes that came with it. Because I'm eliminating one of the variables. This is something you learn in engineering. You change one thing at a time. You test one thing at a time. The only thing I'm testing is the meter. So, by using the same set of leads with every meter I test, we have eliminated a variable. You don't like it? Start your own channel. Now, I would consider this meter to be more along the lines of a more professional meter, more for maybe a uh, HVAC type use or automotive type things like that. So, we're going to give it more of a um, more of a shakedown all right so I've got my uh, super cheap Chinese voltage standard here and put it on voltage it's both AC and DC hit the zero button try again Auto, okay. All right, and 10 volts gives us. Okay, it's in. I must have done something wrong here. Hmm. Okay, there we go. DC. All right, 10 volts. Bang on. Straight on. Bang on. I think that might even be closer than my uh, fluke. 
seven and a half volts. Wow. Five volts. That's the first time it hasn't given us a perfect reading, but it is still well within spec. And we'll, we'll take a look at those here in a moment. Two and a half volts. Dang. That is right on. All right, I'm going to try a little experiment here. I'm going to hook up the leads to the power supply. And I'm just going to vary it a little bit. I'm getting a 12.95 on my power supply, 12.96 here. Let's go voltage. Uh, 10.45, 10.46, really close. Now I'm just going to roll this up and down to see what the, the update rate is. Yeah, it's keeping keeping right on with it. Very nice. So uh, Yeah. Okay, I like that. So this is really nice. I'm not I'm not timing the update rate, but I'm guessing it's probably about 3 times a second or so. At least that's what it seems like to me. All right, on to our next test. We move to the next test. So just let's look at this here real quick. Maximum display 2,000 counts. Update two or three times a second. So I was pretty close. Overrange uh, displays OL, which a lot of people think means overload. I guess probably in some cases it does, but mostly it means open loop. Uh, diode three volts range. Polarity is automatic. Work temperature relative humidity. Electromagnetic compatibility one volt per meter radio frequency field overall frequency okay up to 2,000 meters this is really not what I wanted to see what I want to see are the uh, actual specifications are they on here yeah here we go resolution uh, so we're down to 0.1 millivolt for DC voltage, AC voltage resolution is 1 millivolt. Resistance, uh, 0.1 ohm. Capacitance, uh, 2 nanofarad with a resolution of 1 picofarad. DC amperage, down to 1 milliamp. And AC amperage, or AC current rather, to 1 milliamp. So not bad at all. All powered off of... Uh, one AAA battery. Now these probes, let's, let's zoom out here, these probes you can't measure um, any current with them. So there's no path so I'm just going to get them out of the way here. Alright so let's measure some current and let's talk about how it does it. Um, it does it through a magnetic field basically, Lenz's law. Um, Here's the thing. Let's say we take this 10 watt, 10 ohm resistor. And we hook it up to the power supply. And we power it on. Let me get my voltage set here. Boom, boom. Okay, so we are putting in, um, well, let me adjust it. I'm going to adjust this down to 10 volts here. Give me a second. Just to make the math easy. 10 volts, 5 amps. Um, 10 ohm resistor. We're putting in 0.888 amp. So if we switch this over to the 2 amp range, and we bring it over... Here you see we get nothing. Even though that's AC, there's DC, it's showing me half an amp. What we need to do is we need to bring it over one wire. Interesting. Uh, 
Okay, for DC, I guess we can grab both wires, but for AC, we, we need to have it over one wire. Why is it still showing me 0.4 amp over here? Is it because I didn't zero it? Is that a problem? Zero DC. Okay, let's try again. Should be getting 0.8 amp. There we go. 0.884 amps. That's exactly what it says. Bring it away. And we get nothing. Okay. Now, before my... Now, oh, it's just warm. It's only like, what, two, three watts? Oh, no, that's getting hot. Okay. <laughs> now, here's what I was talking about. Here's a 120-volt lamp. If we put this into true RMS AC and bring it over here, we get nothing. So in order to measure AC current, we need to split those wires. And don't worry, I'm not cutting my lamp apart. That is just, in general, not a good practice. All right, let's check out... Um, that's what I do with the probes here. Let's check out our capacitance and diode ranges and see how they are. So far, really liking this meter. $44. Um, yeah, I think it's a pretty fair price. All right, let's go here. Wants to measure resistance. All right, so there's our diode mode. Which way my anodes are look like anodes are to the left. There we go. Let me bring this in so you can see it. There's red, and we're getting 1.76. There's a uh, purple. It's not reading it, but it is lighting it. Here's a little green one, 1.869. And this should be like a near infrared, and it's too much for it. Okay. Let's try some capacitors. There's a little multi layer ceramic, should read around 100, and we're getting 93.5. This one should read around 100, too. We're getting 75. Yeah, okay. Close enough. How about the big dog? Let me, uh,. Let me discharge it. I don't know when the last time I discharged it was, so. Hello, McFly. Okay, so that should be 100 microfarad, reading 98.1 microfarad. Very nice. Let's go back to our diode mode. There we go. I don't want. To, I want to check the uh, the drop on these. So first, we'll start with a, a standard silicon power diode. Yeah, 0.5, and then a Schottky, which should be what 0.2. Yep, and this is one of those ultra fast diodes. Should read about the same as a standard 0.5. So all very nice there. Let's have a look at. Our continuity, it's latching, and it's very fast. So if you're into that sort of thing, that's very nice. All right, let's go resistance. Check a couple of these, 2R2, perfect. One meg, damn close, one K, and ten K. Yeah, that's right on. You know, for a forty five dollar multimeter. This is one you could take to work with you, and because there's no direct reading of the current, I wouldn't be afraid of using it around higher voltage stuff. Let's try the NCV. I 
I don't know exactly where the uh, I don't know what end it's on. <laughs> Seems like it's down here in the body somewhere. But yeah, that works out pretty well. All right, let's take it apart then. Should we get our wee hot screwdrivers out? My uh, my fingers are a little too chubby to get in there. Let's see what we got. So this should be a single uh, AAA battery according to what I read. I swear to God, it said it took a single battery. Nope, two. My bad. So, Christmas was nice with the fam. Nobody was killed. Although my one aunt thought somebody stole three pieces of her silverware, she later found them. Of course, this is the same aunt who thought somebody was stuffing mashed potatoes. <laughs> Down her drain. Okay, so this is pretty simple here. Let's zoom in and take a look. Let me get something non conductive to point with. How about a pen? Because I can't find anything else at the moment. We got a lot of protection here. Look at all those mobs on there for the incoming voltage protection. Very nice. There's our crystal. Got some diodes here. A lot of capacitors. Either a tranny or voltage regulator. There is our main chip, or no, this is probably our main chip. This is the LCD driver. There's the connection for our non-contact uh, current reading. And of course, there's just a coil of wire in here. There's our battery contacts. Yeah, this is pretty simple and, and very nice construction. As far as uh, Chinese meters go. And in my book, they go pretty far. I mean, I, I know I make fun of them. But I make fun of everything. It's just my nature. This may be one of the nicest Chinese meters I've ever played with. And um, this could easily become a number one meter because it is extremely accurate I don't remember this many threads when I was taking it apart or should I say when I took it apart again I know this is uh, this is not nothing new this has been on the market for a while, and I looked around to see what other people said, and everybody had good things to say about it. Again, this is the uh, Unity UT201E. Because somebody, like I said, somebody had asked me for a recommendation. I'm sorry, I don't remember names. I answer, you know, and read all these comments every day, and there's just too many for me to remember everybody's name, but I do try and remember what you asked me, so this is very nice. Now, one last test out of fairness. We will plug in the leads that are supply, supplied, supplied with it. We'll go back to uh, continuity mode. take our condoms off and
big difference, right? Now, a lot of folks say that there's, um, you know, a lot of schmoo on them. So, uh, let me just give them a little clean. And we'll try again. That is better. But, you know, they're nowhere near as nice as a Pro Masters. And I'm sorry you guys in England can't really get the Pro Masters. I mean, you can, but the shipping is completely unreasonable. Somebody, you know, this in the electrical engineering field over there, England, Europe, tell me what a, a good probe for you guys are over there. And maybe I can get a set and compare them to the uh, Probe Masters. But yeah. Anyway, that's the Unity UT 210E clamp meter. Very nice. Again, my only complaint is I wish this trigger was on the other side. So, you know, if you're putting this on a wire and you're trying to read it, it's kind of hard. If you're a right-hander, you're going to do it like this. And then, of course, you've covered everything up. But I like it. I think you'll probably see it in future videos. Anyway, that's it for today. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. There's still time before the year is out. Wouldn't you like to subscribe in 2018? Sure you would. Why not? Everybody likes to subscribe. That's it. I'm out. Peace.